morning. It's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. This morning, uh, Chris had went to the post office and I got an envelope from somebody. She sent me some recipe cards and she ordered a cookbook. And on the front of her envelope, she had written Proverbs 3, uh, I think it was 4 through 7 or something like that. So I read Proverbs 3 this morning. It's such a blessing. It's uh, In my study Bible, it's called Guidance for the Young. But I would think it would be for the young and the old, of course. Um, and the, the chapter uh, before that, it's chapter 2, and it says the value of wisdom. And let me just say, both of them are beautiful. So I think today I'm going to talk about... Um, Number two, which is Proverbs 2, if you want to turn to it in your Bibles. And then tomorrow we'll go over the uh, chapter 3. So it was a blessing that she wrote that verse on the outside of her envelope. Um, so it was just a good reading this morning. I thought I would, I had, I was sick early today when I got up. I was very nauseous. I have no idea why, unless it's, well, I have had a headache for about three days. And so I'm starting to feel a little better. And um, wanted to come and bring my Bible study to y'all. But I didn't get all dolled up for you this morning. But I'm here, and that's all that matters, and I am feeling better. Um, let's say a prayer for Jewel Cook's um, husband. They have found some blood clots in his leg. And let's also keep uh, a friend of mine, Amy, in our prayer. She has a decision to make on um, whether or not to um, have a hysterectomy, and that is a big decision to make. She's having some problems, so we'll keep her in our prayers as well. Um, I know at church last night, when he asked for prayer requests, I mean, we got a ton of them. But let me just let me just tell y'all this. We, we joined the church a couple of weeks ago. It's right near our home. It's called New Vision Baptist Church. And um, he got there a couple of years ago, the pastor did. His name is Daniel Joyner. And um, when he first got there, I don't think, but there was a handful of people in the church, actual handful of people was all. And we've been having pretty good numbers. And last night, it was amazing. When we got there on a Wednesday night, there were more people there on a Wednesday night than there were on Sunday mornings when we st first started visiting there. So, boy, was he excited. Um, and he has told us if we get up to 100, um, that he would swallow a goldfish. So that's funny, too, for the kids. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, if you're local, y'all are welcome to come. He is, I will say, he is on fire. He is a, uh exciting uh, preacher to sit under. Um, I would call him, He was. he's a definitely a convicting type of preacher, which I like, um, but he preaches the Word of God, and he doesn't um, tip, tippy-toe around it, which is what I like. I like for the man of God to preach from the Word and not feel like he's going to hurt somebody's feelings because um that is what they're supposed to do, is bring us the word of the Lord. So, um, and if they're doing it right, it should convict us, right? So let's read Proverbs chapter 2 together this morning. It's called The Value of Wisdom. And I know it was wisdom, the word wisdom, that brought me to the book. Because um, I used to always think I was pretty smart. And I really always wanted to be wise, even from a young girl. Um, and when I realized what wisdom truly was, uh, and it comes from the Lord, I realized how much of it I was actually lacking. And because of Solomon and uh, the words, uh, the explanation of wisdom in the Bible in different places, it sparks my interest to read the book. Um, yes, I was saved, and yes, I went to church, but I had never read the Bible. And uh, so anytime I see anything about wisdom, it's real exciting to me. Um, and this says, and we all, we all know the verse, the beginning, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you could just start there. But let's read Proverbs 2. It says, My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom, 
and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice. It says equity and every good path. I'm not real sure about that word. I'll have to ask Chris. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, from those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil, and delight in the perversity of the wicked whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their paths to deliver you from the immortal woman from the seductress who flatters with her words, who forsakes the compassion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God, for her house leads down to death and her paths to death, to the dead. None who go to her return, nor do they regain the paths of life, so you may walk in the way of goodness, and keep to the paths of righteousness, for the upright will dwell in the land, and the blameless will remain in it, but the wicked will be cut off from the earth, and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. So that's a beautiful um, value of wisdom in our book. If you want to read that over, it is Proverbs chapter 2. Um, it does teach us that seeking wisdom will help us uh, not fall into the path of the devious, of the immortal woman, the seductress, um, and perversity of wicked and crooked people. Um, and I believe that. So let's see what this girl says about this chapter in Proverbs. We have a study Bible, so I like to read what she's got at the bottom. She says, um, verses 1 through 4, single-hearted devotion to discovering and doing what is right is implied in the verbs receive, treasure, incline, apply, cry out, lift up, seek, and search. The three ifs in these verses show the importance of our choices. We are instructed to do our part in seeking wisdom in order to reap the wonderful promised results. God grants wisdom as a gift to those who truly seek it, and he bestows understanding and knowledge. She also says, verse 2 is talking about the heart, and this is what she says. Verse 2, is, it says, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. It says the heart was the seat of the intellect and of life itself in Hebrew thinking. Not only must the ear be inclined to wisdom, but the heart must be diligently, must diligently seek to understand wisdom. Obedience is a lifelong endeavor. Um, it is amazing how many promises God has for his children and for those who love him. They far outweigh the sin in our lives. We can have 
all of these blessings, all of these promises, and live an abundant life through Jesus Christ if we seek out his wisdom and understanding and apply it in our hearts and minds and in our life. So um, it's just a beautiful chapter. Um, she also has another excerpt on wisdom. Um, I guess we could read it. I've been on here for a little bit, but I'm going to read it right quick, and then we'll end the lesson with this. Um, and then tomorrow, she talks about the beauty of a woman is more than an appealing face. And we'll read that, okay? But today it says, um, fear the Lord is the foundation for wisdom. The prerequisite prerequisite for obedience and the accomp sorry y'all these words she has a big vocabulary it says fear the lord is the foundation for wisdom the prerequisite for obedience and the accompaniment of love fearing the lord and loving him are not an tithical what is that? Anti-ethical. No. Anti-thetical. What does that mean, Chris? He must not be in here anymore. All right. Fearing the Lord and loving him are not anti-thetical, but inseparable responses. The book of Proverbs is permitted permeated. Lord of mercy, I have never seen such vocabulary in her description before. We need a dictionary just to look at the meanings of this. And some of y'all might be smart enough that you know them already, but I'm not. Normally, I won't read something unless I know what I'm reading, but today I, I kind of just jumped into this, and I guess I shouldn't have. The book of Proverbs is permeated with these admonitions. Other wisdom literature supports the plea. The prophets echo the same, and the New Testament picks up this emphasis on its description of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so opposite mine. Gentle and quiet. That's the one I need to work on. Fear, in this sense, indicates submissive reverence and not stark terror. The, re the reject is all which inspires respectful obedience is to determine to go your own way and turn away from God's way. The promised results of fearing him are goodness, riches, honor, satisfaction, a right relationship with others, a long life, mercy, strong confidence, and God's constant attention. That's a lot, isn't it? Um... Chris, will you tell me what this word means right quick? Because I don't know what it is. We're going to ask him right quick. Um, I didn't even know how to pronounce some of these words, but it says, Fear the Lord is the foundation for wisdom, the prerequisite for obedience, and the accompan accompaniment, accompaniment of love. Fearing the Lord and loving him are not antithetical. What does that mean? Typical. No. It's the second. It's the second sentence in that highlighted part. Oh, Vicky looked it up. She says it's Anti, Yeah. She says it's directly opposed or contrasted. Right. Okay, let's read the sentence so we know how to apply it. Uh, fearing the Lord and loving him are not opposed, but inseparable responses. So, wow. Um, pretty much, let, let me just sum it up in my own words that aren't so complicated. Lord of mercy. Um, wisdom is the foundation uh, for fearing the Lord. Fearing the Lord is the foundation for wisdom. You should fear the Lord. If you do, you're wise. Okay? That's the that's the, one of the number one things you can do because if you fear the Lord in submission to him, then you want to listen to his word 
read his commands and apply them to your life for fear that if you don't, you won't receive the blessings that he has for you. Um, and he will chastise us as his children. And that is a good thing because sometimes we need to be reminded that he's there and he's not happy with us uh, and our actions and it can help us. So, um, Y'all pick that up and read it this morning. I know you can't read this this part of the book because it's her words, but just read Proverbs 2 again. It's a real blessing. And tomorrow we'll go through Proverbs 3 and we'll talk about the beauty in and of a woman. Okay? Um, I hope y'all enjoy your little reading today. I have. Um, who, who sent that last um, card to me, Chris? Do you have the envelope? Still. Darlene Sprayberry is the one who sent us a, um, a, a Christmas card. And on the outside of the Christmas card, she had written Proverbs 3. That's why I went to that part of the book to read this morning. Janet Moore says, I needed this today. We got 18 inches of snow and called church off last Sunday and this past Wednesday. For heaven's sakes, Janet, yes, you did. Bless your heart. Um, Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. We're going to say our prayers. And remember to keep those in uh, prayer who are traveling. Um, and let's pray for our families uh, I'm going to tell you, that, that movie we watched the other night, War Room, was amazing. It was so good and helped us see how little we do pray. Um, we want a lot of things and we want the blessings, but we pray very little for them. Um, let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your discernment, for your wisdom. We thank you that we can come into your book and gain an understanding of your wisdom um, and that it would keep us from falling into the hands of those who are, I would want to say fools, those that uh, oppose you and go right against you. We pray that we would stay away from those types of people. Um, it's fine to witness to them, but uh, we pray that we wouldn't hang around them for the fear of their sin rubbing off on us. Um, it's so much easier in our flesh to go the opposite way than it is to follow the truth and your commandments. And we need to realize that sin is something we need to flee from. Um, keep us all safe today and be with all of our families and the ones who need special prayers for their health and uh, missing loved ones this time of the year. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye. Chris is going to make us a chicken pot pie today. He's going to make the gravy and make a chicken pot pie. He's never done it before. So, uh, y'all pray for him that he does a really good job because I'm ready to eat it. I have to work on some stuff today, so he's going to be cooking tonight. He's such a blessing. Um, and I spent the day with him yesterday. So today, um, I have to do some other things. Y'all have a good day. Love you. Bye.